Hello and welcome to AC Electronics. So in this video, we are going to see the basics of Bode plots. We'll be uh, seeing what is Bode plot and how uh, the Bode plots can be uh, drawn. The basic steps we'll be seeing. Okay, so this is an introduction video to Bode plots. We'll be seeing the basic uh, structure, what is actually Bode plot and also the basic steps. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the basics of Bode plots. So this Bode plots are another method which we use in control system to find the stability of a system that is to find whether the given system is stable or not we take its catastrophic equation and we plot Bode plot we also use another various methods like root lockers is there and also various other techniques are there for finding the stability so this is again another way or method we use which is called the Bode plot we'll be studying the Bode plots as various parts we'll be doing various parts as various videos Okay, in this video, we'll be discussing what is actually Bode plot, wha what is its difference from other techniques, etc. And also, we'll be seeing the basic steps. Okay, so let's see about the introduction to Bode plots. So, when you look at a Bode plot, you can see that there are two plots. One plot corresponding to the magnitude represented in dB. You can see it here, magnitude in dB. And also, you can see just below that, you will plot the angle or the phase. Okay. Both this magnitude and angle or the phase we are plotting opposite to omega or the angular frequency. You can see that there is only one x axis. Only the y axis is varying. In one y axis we plot the magnitude and we uh, plot the phase in the next. So this is how we generally see a plot. Okay. So for both these uh, magnitude and for phase we have a common x-axis which is the angular frequency so if you have drawn body plots in your uh, in your classes or in your semesters you can see that it will be like this above there will be magnitude below that just below that there is phase okay now what is the uh, significance of drawing a plot uh, with magnitude and phase separate so uh, in root lockers we don't plot it as separate right we just plot one root locus plot that's it right but here we plot it as separate there are two plots there is a magnitude plot and a phase plot now why we go for this is because consider that there is a system into which we are going to give an input which is having a constant magnitude and a phase now when the signal is passing through the system there will be some variations in the magnitude and the phase it can be some variations to measure this variations that is how much variation is there in the magnitude and how much there is for the phase we go for two separate plots okay so that is the significance why we are going for the the magnitude and the phase plot separately okay also consider that when there is a change in the magnitude okay consider that here the magnitude was a here there was a dash okay so the ratio of a dash by a we call it as gain now why i am explaining about this term called gain because towards the end we have to define certain criteria for the system to be stable from the Bode plot right so in that case we will be talking about the gain margin and the phase margin all those things so you should be knowing that gain is nothing but the variation in the magnitude if there is an increase in uh, the magnitude in the output side or consider that there is some variations from the in initial inputs magnitude when it is coming to the output there is a change in the magnitude okay so this change we call it as gain and also the there will be some variation in the phase okay so that is the significance i was talking about the why we are plotting two plots why we are plotting magnitude and phase is separate okay so that is the basic thing why we are going for a magnitude and a phase plot separately okay so what we do in body plot stability analysis is we'll be taking a transfer function that is we will be taking the characteristic equation we will be uh, plotting the magnitude and the phase plot separately then we will define certain conditions which are the stability conditions and we check for it whether the system or whether the given plot of this uh, system satisfies the condition or not if it is not satisfying mean it means it is not stable if it is satisfying it is stable okay so that is a basic of body plots now in order to draw the magnitude plot what is the equation is magnitude is uh, given in db and phase is in degrees 
and both this magnitude and phase we draw in logarithmic graph okay so this is nothing but log values so this is if you have drawn it uh, in your lifetime it, at any time you should be knowing that we generally draw a body plot in a log graph or a logarithmic graph okay so the equation for magnitude is 20 log to the base 10 g j of omega into h j of omega so here g of s h of s we are putting s s j omega okay so you'll be getting as g j of omega h j of omega and h j of omega will be equal to 1 why because we generally plot the body plots for unity feedback systems so it will be only g j of omega but this is the general equation then phi that is a phase in degree equal to angle g j of omega into h j of omega okay the, there is actually separate equations for finding the angle and there is a, uh, there is separate methods for uh, finding the magnitude plot and also the phase plot we'll be discussing in the procedure video okay so this is an introduction video so this is the general equations for finding the magnitude or drawing the magnitude plot and the phase plot we use these two equations okay now there is another important thing you should be knowing that here if you see this x-axis we have plotted the values for omega and it generally starts from 0 0.11 10 100 that is it is multiples of 10 you can see that 0 0.1 into 10 into 10 into 10, into 10. so it is actually increasing as decades okay into 10 that is it is increasing as multiples of 10 okay so here we are writing or we are taking only values of omega greater than 0 this is one condition and also when we are doing the question you should be knowing that all the roots of the transfer function generally for all the systems to plot a body plot its roots of the transfer function should be in the right half of the plane okay right half of the plane the roots should be okay so only if your transfer functions root are in the right half of the plane you can have a body plot so these are the two conditions you should be knowing that the roots of the transfer function should be in the right half of the plane and also we take only values of omega greater than zero Okay, next we are going to see the steps which uh, we generally use for plotting a body plot. These are just equations, right? Now we have to follow certain steps to uh, take the transfer function, convert it to some other form and make it in a graphical format, right? So in order to have a graphical form, we take certain or we do certain steps. Next we are going to see the steps. Okay. In the next video, we will be seeing the detailed procedure. In this video, we will be just uh, explaining with these are the basic steps. But what are the basic procedures or the detailing of the steps we will be seeing as the next video. Okay. So, let us see the basic steps that we do in body plot. We are going to see the basic steps we use uh, to form body plots. That is, we use in body plot drawing. So, the first step is represent the upper loop transfer function in time constant form so by this time you should have uh, understood that we generally take the upper loop transfer function which is g of s h of s to check the stability analysis that is whether it is a uh, root locus or uh, whether it is a judy's test we generally use the upper loop transfer function okay here also we are taking the upper loop transfer function but the upper loop transfer function will be given in some format but we have to bring to the standard form so that we can draw the body plot and it is called the time constant form i'll explain a small example so consider that your transfer function is in the form s by s plus a into s plus b by s plus c into s plus d this is your form but you have to bring this to the time constant form and you have to write in 1 plus s by a form. So you have to take a a common here from this term and you will be getting 1 plus s by a. And also take a b from the next term you will be getting 
1 plus s by b. Numerator is complete. From this term, I am going to take a c. So, it is 1 plus s by c. And from this term, I am going to take a d. And you will be getting 1 plus s by d. Okay. So, your transfer function, you have converted into this form. That is, from the first term, you have taken a a common. From this term, you have taken a, a common. From this term, you have taken b is common. From this term, you have taken c is common. d taken from this term. So, you will be getting outside a, b by c, d. You can write it as a k. That is a constant. So, you will be getting the form k into 1 plus s by a into 1 plus s by b by 1 plus s by c into 1 plus s by t. So, this is your required format to draw the body plot. And this is the standard format, which we call as time constant form. So, you have to bring it to this form. Anyway, in the next video, you will be uh, getting to know the detailed procedure. So, just as a basic, you should know that this is the standard form. Next one. The next step is put s equal to j omega. So, I have explained in the beginning that the equation for magnitude m equal to 20 log 10 mod g j omega. Right. So, here j omega we have to take. So, you have to put s is equal to j omega. So, that is the second step. Then, third one, find the corner frequencies and arrange in the ascending order. Okay. So, you have to take all the corner frequencies from various terms. And you have to arrange those frequencies in their ascending order. Okay, now what is a corner frequency means? The corner frequency is a frequency at which there is a change in the slope of the magnitude plot. Okay, in the next part we will be explaining how the slope and how the magnitude plot is varying or its slope is varying. But just know that it is the frequency at which the slope of your magnitude plot will change. Okay, so for this transfer function, the corner frequencies are A, B, C, D. Okay, so you have to pick A, B, C, D from this transfer function and you have to arrange them in the ascending order. Whichever is the smallest one, you have to put it first and then likewise you have to arrange. Okay, so that is the importance of the corner frequencies. Then, next step, you are omega that is your x-axis varies from 0.1 to 10 multiples that is you have to take at least 0.1 as a minimum value and then vary the value of omega as multiples of 10s then 0.1 into 10 will be 1 then 1 into 10 10 into 10 likewise you have to vary as multiples of 10 so likewise you have to draw then fifth step is you have to you'll be getting various terms that is this is one term this is one term this is one term and this is one term so you have to plot the magnitude plots for these four terms and then you have to combine so while drawing we actually uh, you have to we'll uh, draw a starting light or the initial line and then we'll extend the slope likewise we'll go so this step you will get to know in the next part okay so uh, just know that you have to draw the magnitude plots for all the terms given in your transfer function and you have to combine it and then you will be getting your total or the entire magnitude plot then similarly you have to form the phase plot also okay so both these plots will be drawing as x axis omega that is with respect to omega, you will be drawing the magnitude and the phase plot. Okay, so these are the, actually the basic steps which we do for plotting the border plots. Okay, so that's all for this video. The next video, we will be seeing the detailed procedure which we adopt for drawing of border plots. So, I am really hoping you understood the concept of border plots. What is its significance? So, it is actually a frequency domain uh, method because we are plotting the magnitude and the phase with respect to omega. So, it is a frequency analysis method or the frequency domain analysis technique it is. Okay. So, I am really hoping that you got, got an introduction to the body plots. If yes, please do give it a thumbs up and also share it with your friends. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.